Welcome, 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 music fam, to this week's Music Talk Podcast. I am Victor, your music mentor. Look, before we move on, make sure you get a chance to subscribe to our channel, like us on Facebook, or you can follow us on Instagram. Or you can go right to our website, www.sanctifiedsound.org. Hey, at the end of this, make sure that you stick around because we're going to give you some information that is going to change your life forever. <laughs> All right, so come on back and we'll dive right in with our first guest. Welcome, 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 music fam, to another episode of Music Talks Podcast. I'm sitting here with Miss Rosalind. Hey, Alan. Alan, okay, good, 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 yes. okay. Uh, talk to the people, let them know who you are, uh, you know, where they can find you, and uh, what have you been doing and everything. So, sure. Mm -hmm. My name is Rosalind Allen, and I've been married to Mr. Charles Allen for 16 years now. And between us, we have five kids and um, four grandchildren. And I've basically been just writing. I love to write. Mm -hmm. So I've been writing books, yeah. writing plays, wow. writing songs. Wow, just all around communicating. All around. <laughs> Enjoying it. Yeah. So how long have you been writing uh, plays? And, and Well, actually, it's been a long time since I was in high school for writing mm -hmm. plays. Really? But I actually started writing when I was in the fifth grade. Okay. Uh, I, I wrote my first poem in the fifth grade. Wow. And actually received a, a, a award for it. Wow. Uh, it was placed on the hallway. Yeah. And all the teachers got to judge it. Oh, and so it was so, like a school-wide type yes, of... Yes, uh, elementary school. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were all writing poems and it was placed on the hallways. And uh, the teachers come out and critique it and, and judged it and saw which one they wanted to, you know, yeah. to win. And uh, I won. Wow. And so that's what gave me the unction that I could write. Yeah. Because after that, I was like, oh, <laughs> somebody enjoyed what I wrote. Right, so, right, right. Yeah. So it sparked that in me. Yeah. I was always doodling and writing something, mm -hmm. but just wasn't right didn't know quite sure what I was doing. Yeah. But once I did that point, I understood, yeah. you know, this is what I'm going to do. Wow. So was it a hard type of feel to try to fi figure out exactly what you're going to no. write? Or no, it wasn't. It's just kind of, I have this little quirky way about me. I, I Even if I meet a new person, I kind of study them. And so I can make a song up about you right away. Yeah. I, I can write a story on you right okay. away. I can. Okay. It's just uh, something God gave me. Yeah. But it wasn't hard at all. Yeah. No. Now, you know that they have some type of people that can actually read a person and, and be able to tell their story simply by looking at them. Are you one of those type of people? I'm one of those people. Really? Yeah. And you know what? Um, have you ever heard of a person who is always for the underdog? I've always yeah. been that person. Somebody said, you know what? You love the underdog. Mm -hmm. And I love the underdog. And I'll tell you a quick story. Okay. I remember when I was in elementary school. And I had some friends that would come and play tetherball with me. I don't know if you remember what tetherball is. Is it, is it the, with, the, with the pole? The ball you, on the yeah. pole. I was the queen of tetherball at the, in my day. I never understood that game. Well, it's just being able to get that ball around that person. Yeah. You know, so and I was always able to know and predict that person mm -hmm. and be able to hit it when I thought they weren't paying close enough attention. Hit it at an angle, make it swoop <laughs> up and go around. Right. But anyway, so I had a couple of friends that would meet me on the school ground every Saturday morning. Mm -hmm. And I would play tetherball and she would bring this young man with her. And she said it was her brother. Yeah. And they didn't treat him too well. And I couldn't understand because I'm from a family with lots of kids. Uh, it's nine of us. Mm -hmm. Well, eight now, one of my sisters passed away, but it was nine of us. Yeah. So I didn't understand when you didn't love your sibling. Right. So I began to question her, why do y'all treat him this way? And then come to find out, I didn't know he was going to the elementary school too. Mm -hmm. And then she finally said, because he's a retard. And I was like... Wow. It's not retarded, you know, you just have to treat him better. But anyway, to make a long story short, I would I befriend this young man. I found him on the school ground. He was in the special ed class, okay. but I would go and play with him just to make him feel good. Wow. 
had a come big heart back then too. Yes, come to find out when I got to be an adult that this young man was actually a blood cousin. Really? Yes. He was a blood cousin and I wrote many stories and many poems about this young man. Yeah. It sparked it in me to talk about love and, mm -hmm. and how to treat people. That was my thing back then. I wrote about love. Wow. It wasn't a much true love. It was, you know, love one for another for your fellow man. That's crazy. That's, a, that's an amazing story. Yeah. Speaking of family, I, I, I'm, I'm sure that you come from a very musical background. Sure. Yeah. Can you talk about that a little bit? Yes. Actually, my mother started writing mm -hmm. and playing music when I was a little girl. Mm -hmm. And we had an organ, we had a piano, and uh, and drums and whatever else in the yeah. house. My mother was the president of the choir. Yeah. And so she had a bunch of kids and we all learned to play. But then there was one young man that I, one of my little brothers, I tried to teach him how to play. Mm -hmm. And he said, what, like this? And he played, God has smiled on me better than me. Really? And I was like, wow, y'all, the baby can play. <laughs> Which is Elder Timothy Britton. Wow. Okay. 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 Yes. Now we're getting somewhere. Yes. Trying yes. to dig into the roots and everything. Yes. Okay. So hey, how was it like like seeing what he did with, uh, with his music? Oh, man. It was amazing. Mm -hmm. I mean, Tim had a calling on his life that was just anybody could see, even the kids in the neighborhood said, oh, this man go, this young man gonna be a preacher. Yeah. You know, it was just something about him. And I mean, it didn't take a lot for him. I remember he even went to, mama sent him to college, to, off to Southern, to have some lessons. Mm -hmm. The lady said, no, I can't teach him. Wow. He could teach me. Wow. So he's just always been connected Mm -hmm. with music ever since he was a little boy he's played with some of the best he's been everywhere playing with the best of the best and for the best that's crazy yes. that's crazy i'm sure he's been a part of the plays and all that stuff too uh, has he, not? he hasn't but my nephew timothy mm -hmm. uh timothy tbj yeah. holy nations <laughs> yes uh, he's doing some amazing things right, right now and, shout out um, to tbj shout out to tbj <laughs> yes Mm -hmm. And um, he's doing some amazing work, yeah. and um, he has been a great instrument in my life. Mm -hmm. He's helped me develop music and develop, you know, a lot of things that I need to, if I can't catch it, he got mm -hmm. it for me. Yeah. You know, he'll just say, come on over, auntie, and I go over mm -hmm. and he'll fix me up. Right. You know, so he's been there with me. Wow. 100%. Man, just that musical back, the background, the, yes. the resources that you that you have around you. Yes. Talk to me about um, what is your process when you're creating? Because uh, you do stage plays. Yes, I do. You know how many you wrote since uh, since you started? Well, actually, I can't count them mm -hmm. because actually I started writing plays when I was a teenager. Yeah. So, but my actual play that I actually got money for mm -hmm. was. 2018, okay. friend, yeah, me and my friend uh, Linda, we did a, we co-wrote a, a play mm -hmm. called Lord We Got Issues. <laughs> and we had, I know, well over 500 people there. Okay. And it was a great success. Mm -hmm. But I've been writing plays for the church and putting on stage plays forever. So what was your first one? You remember that one? Don't drive your mother away. Don't drive. Everybody want to write plays about your mother and stuff. <laughs> because that's Throw what you know. Train. No, I know that's a movie, but <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's kind of what you know back, you know, right. for then, mm -hmm. and it's easier to to relate to. Yeah. You know, so I wrote um, uh, don't. And actually, my sister, um, she has a uh, an A track. Really? With the play on it. An A track. Wow. Yes. That's way he performed my, my time. <laughs> yes, so oh my gosh. Track, you know. So I've written plenty of plays, mm -hmm. puppet plays. Mm -hmm. I love puppet ministry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All of that. So okay, so let's go let's go to your process. Mm -hmm. Like how do you uh, go from, you know, just the concept to putting it all on paper and everything? Were you more 
um, is it more like a, like a download from like the spirit or is it something that, you know, you just want to tell a specific story? Like what what's going on in your mind when you want to construct a new a new production? Both. Oh, okay. Sometimes it's what I hear from the Lord. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes it's I could just see a word or see something going on or hear it and 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 the Lord give it to me. He said, there it is right there. Go right. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times, even this morning, I was up early with uh, God giving me a song. Mm -hmm. And I got up. My husband said, where are you going? I said, this is between me and God. Just let me roll right now. He said, go do you. So, you know, it, it comes both ways. Wow. Okay. I can be inspired by different things. Yeah. So, do you, do you, what part of the play would you start with? Um, like you like just for as far as the concept, are you one of the ones that start from, you know, it was a great morning. <laughs> well such and such rose from the from the bed and the, the birds were chirping. Are you like, man, look, let me get to the tenth part first and then work backwards? Because I know that there are certain people that do both. So Yeah, I, I, mm -hmm. I actually do both. Okay. Now I am that person that, that in the morning a bird, the sound of birds. Mm -hmm. Give me a sense of creativity. Yeah. It gives me a sense of solace, you know, puts me in a calm mode mm -hmm. and give me a, a moment where I can hear from the Lord. Wow. And if, if if just say for instance, I want like I wrote a play and I'm getting ready to do it. Uh, it, it, it was supposed to be happening September the 26th this year, mm -hmm. but because of the right, virus right. thing, mm -hmm. you know, I had to slow my roll. Um my mother my mother's love mm -hmm. that was the title of it and the way i came up with that was my mother is in home with me mm -hmm. and she's i'm taking care of her but yet she always said to me i love you girl yeah thank you for taking care of me and she's always praying my all my siblings can tell you she's always prayed for us and she let it be known mm -hmm. i pray for you yeah so i put my mother's prayer because it inspired me. She got up and walked through the hallway. I saw her trying to make her little way. Mm -hmm. Then I say, mm -hmm, that's it. My mother's prayer. Wow. And I went from there. So is it um, when you when you get to that particular point, are you retelling that story in your play? Or is it a completely different concept with that as the basis? Like, you know, like, like what's your approach at that point? Oh, the reason why I'm asking is because, oh, you know, fine. I'm a lot of the it. people that, that, uh, that follow this particular program or trying to get into this the particular industry or the particular vein of you know entertainment yes. and so they don't know um the, the actual process the nuts and bolts of how to get certain things done or they, you know or they do and you know they just want to make sure that they're going in the right direction so exactly. let's just say okay like you have that particular concept um What's the next step at that point? Are you trying to figure out, you know, uh, how you can retell that story or um, is it, will it blow up into a completely different, you know, uh, Tyler Perry drama field for colored girls type of, you know, <laughs> situation? Or yeah, whatever. well, for me, I'll, I'll either tell the story like it happened yeah. or how I want it to happen. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I just use plain old everyday life to tell a story so somebody can get a message out of it. Because I want a message to come out of it. You know, that's that's the goal for writing is to, do, to get a message so mm -hmm. somebody can be blessed through it. So my process is simply, it's no right or wrong way for me. I'll, I may start with just what I, what's happening around me mm -hmm. or I incorporate you know, just everyday living, everyday life right. to get to, you know, sometimes I may write it a, a certain way and then God will send me back the next hour or so. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Take that out. Wow. This is where I want you to go. Right. Take it right here because this is going to bless somebody right here. Absolutely. So it's no right or wrong way mm -hmm. to start your writing. You just need to be inspired by what you're doing and know what story you're trying to tell. You need to know your conclusion. Okay. So if you know what you need to happen, what needs to happen on the end of that, right. then you can tell 
right. to start. You know, I hear that a lot when it, I study a lot of uh, business people and successful folks. And one of the things that they talk about is beginning with the end in mind. Uh, figure out how to, um, like, what's the end of your story yes. or your destination. And I talk yes. about this all the time is like your GPS, you got to put your destination in first. Before and then, there. exactly, because that's going to tell you the path that you need to take, the best path you need to take, so you exactly. need to know the end. So you say it's the same way with uh, with the play. Yes. Is understand the specific uh, emotion, uh, the ending that you're trying to yes. achieve, and then figure out how to get there. Exactly. Wow. Exactly. So, you know, like my first few lines is just to get it started. Mm -hmm. Just to get conversation started. Yeah. Just to get the, you know, what's going, going on, you know. Mm -hmm. And then after that, you can just broaden it. Just open it up and just yeah. let it flow. So on average, how many times do you have to ball it up and <laughs> throw it in file 13? Uh, <laughs> Well, I don't want to disclose that. <laughs> but to be honest, because I know I used to write plays too when yeah. I was in um, uh, middle school. I actually got a chance to like perform my flip my play in front of my class. Wow! Uh, one of my favorite teachers of all time. I'll never forget her name. Her name's Miss Perrin, uh, Sherwood Middle, and um, she found out I wrote plays, mm -hmm. and she actually got the kids together and just. We just sat in front of the class and just read the plays uh, and everything. So oh, yeah. I could imagine how you felt, you know, when you actually got your play. Yeah, and actually I did none of that in school. Really? I didn't do any of that and I wanted to mm -hmm. because my mother's goal for me was choir rehearsal, yeah. Bible study, Sunshine Band, YPWW, choir rehearsal. Right church, revival. So I didn't get a chance to participate in those things even though I wanted to. Mm -hmm. But God already had it inside of me. And so what I did was I will I, I, I look at mentorship a lot. I, I mm -hmm. go and I look up people who do things in, in the field that I love and mm -hmm. I study. I study my craft. I don't just, you know, I, I, I study. Okay. So I go and find somebody who's doing it. Who's your favorite person? You know who it is. Who is that? That's, that's Tyler. Tyler Perry? He really? is. Let me tell you why. I'm going to tell you why. Because he came from nothing. Mm -hmm. And God elevated him to something. Right. And then he don't mind sharing what he's doing. Yeah. Wow. You don't mind sharing. You know, some people, when they learn something, they keep it to themselves. Yeah. They don't want you to get where they're going. That's crazy. <laughs> and I, I'm not saying I'm trying to be a Tyler Perry. Oh, no, no. But no. I'd love to have his finances. Oh, but, absolutely. But I really want to do this thing mm -hmm. so God can be pleased with okay. me. Okay, so uh, real quick. I'm gonna tell you my issue with uh, with Tyler. Not that it's a bad thing. Mm -hmm. As far as like the like his plays are awesome, like, amazing. Uh, but he his endings, you know what I'm saying? Like his endings of the movie is just like, wait, what? <laughs> it's like, I understand that, but I don't take from him those kind of things. Okay. I take from him his drive, mm -hmm. his motivation. See what he write on, write like him. Right. Out style, I don't even try to. Mimic his style. I have my own. Mm -hmm. So I just take what he knows and apply it to my okay. life. Not what he does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's more of his, his, uh, his drive and his mentality. Yes. Uh, to keep going. Yes. And, you know, he was, uh, I know he was homeless yes. for a long time. Yes. You know, living out of his car and everything. Yes. So. And it's a lot to be said for a person who can start there and, and rise up. Mm -hmm. But some people go there and never come up. Well. And don't care to. So... That's all. I, I don't want Tyler's, you know, accolades. I'm on my own. Mm -hmm. And I want it to come from the Lord. Wow. That's great. Not that I don't appreciate people who appreciate what I do. And I'm, I'm knowing that God is going to bring me to a better place and a bigger place, a larger platform, so somebody can see my purpose. Yeah. Okay, so I want to ask you now about... Um, you know, you briefly mentioned the whole COVID-19 issue that's going on right now with the social isolation and 
um, you know, uh, everybody's just kind of staying away from each other. Um, how has that affected you as a uh, in your creativity? It hasn't affected my creativity at all. Mm. It just has given me more time to be creative. Yeah. You know, I, I, God, we, we can't worry about this COVID-19. We just better sit still and listen to what God is trying to tell us. Mm. And so he's given us an opportunity, some of us, a chance to seek him. Yeah. And so at this time, I'm just writing. I'm writing and getting in some of the things that I missed before, didn't get a chance to finish up. I'm yeah. Going back to some of that stuff hasn't affected me at all. Wow. So what are, what are some of the stuff that you're working on right now? Right now, I'm actually working on launching my first children's book. Really? A bedtime story for Jack. Wow. So you okay, so is is this any in any way like hindering you or kind of taking a back seat from the plays and all that stuff just to kind of write this book or Well I don't want to say it's taken away from me. I I, I think that, you know, it's just a little delay. Mm -hmm. And um so I, I'm enjoying the process. Yeah. So right now the book is going on and when it's time for the play, the play gonna be going yeah, on. Yeah. So uh, it's, I'm okay. That's cool. So explain the book. So the book is a bedtime story for Jack, and um, it was inspired through you know I I did in home daycare. That's what I'm doing now. I'm an in home daycare provider. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I've done that for the last so thirty you're years. House, so they oh no, they come, come to me. Okay, yeah. for the last thirty years, mm -hmm. and so. I love kids. I mean, I adore them. And so this is all I've done was hang around children, mm -hmm. you know, so they inspired me to write. Mm -hmm. And I wrote a book and I, I, I actually, it's in publication now and it'll be done in about a month or two. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's a bedtime story for Jack. Yeah. So what's the plan? Are you, are you trying to go um, and just do more of an online release or are you going to go to these different places? And, I'm going different places. Actually, yeah. I'm doing Audible. Okay. So I'm going to do an audio and a regular book. Okay. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm very excited. Yeah, so I know like you, um, you, you put out uh, a publication and you put out plays and you do all these other types of stuff. Like what's the process of really trying to promote those particular things. Is it, is it the same process or I know it's slightly different because it's slightly different uh, programs and, and forms of entertainment, but yeah. as far as your approach, like what, how do you feel like your approach is going to be, um, you know, promoting a book as opposed to promoting a play? Well, as for right now, I just started my Facebook page, mm -hmm. author Rosalind Allen. Yeah. So I set the page up. So I reached out to all 900 and something of my friends, okay. invited them to my page. Yeah. And uh, I've gotten great feedback. Sweet. So I have a lot of little things that I'm planning. I'm going to do a book release. I'm planning my book release now. Yeah. I'm going to reach, I know a lot of people. A lot of people know me mm -hmm. here in Baton Rouge and everywhere. I'm not going to just stick with Baton Rouge. I'm Absolutely. reaching out to my D.C. family. I used to live in Washington, D.C. for a while. And just everybody I know everywhere. I'm reaching out to them as we speak. I am calling and telling them that this is what I need you to do for me. I need you to put my book here and I need you to advertise my book. So it's just about pushing it and doing what you got to do. So have you thought about using your musical family uh, as a means of uh, the cross promotion? Because I know uh, some of the uh, the Britons have put out, you know, certain projects and, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> uh, be great. Yeah, like, sounds you know, like, like a good idea. Yeah, it's like a put on a big tour or something like that. Wow. And, you know, just this just, just big, you know, thing, especially, you know, how, when, you know, whenever quarantine is over, people going to want to, you know, yeah. <laughs> convene. Well, yes, I, will speak to, like I will speak to my family um, yeah. about that. That sounds like a wonderful idea. Yeah. It sounds like something I'd love to do. Right. 
Right. So right. we might get together and do something. You That's know? cool. That's cool. Yeah. It's great to have a lot of resources when you have oh, yeah. musical family and stuff like that. Exactly. History that I know that the Britons have. And um, man, um, uh, shout out to Andre Britton. Oh, uh, that's yeah. my guy <laughs> right yeah. there, man. Um, we, um, you know, so we, I've been in a band with him for a while at, at uh, Bethany. Oh, okay. And yes. um, man, just getting to know him. At first, I was intimidated by the guy because oh, his reputation, so sweet, though. his reputation, I heard of before I met him. Yes. And I'm a drummer by heart, uh -huh. and that's my first instrument. And um, and a lot of people don't know that he plays drums. Oh yeah. And he's a monster. Yeah. When he plays. Uh, yeah. So I heard about that and I'm like, man, this dude about to come in here and take my spot. You know what I'm saying? I've been playing Bethany for over like 15 years now. So he's about to come in and swoop in. But the coolest cat I've ever met. Yeah, he's you know? so humble. Yeah. Just chilling and just a monster at what he does. I love his preparation and, uh, you know, just uh, his heart behind what he, what he does. It's not just him playing. It's like he's actually he believes in what he's what he's, what he's playing yes same thing with uh timothy Britton jr yeah. you know so i know that that whole family that whole the, the whole tree <laughs> has yes. the same heart and everything yes. so it's good yeah. to be connected with those yes and i forgot to say my yeah. baby brother he actually worked with me as well on all my stage plays he's there right there with me yeah. every step of the way let's give a shout out to tamara Oh yeah, she just did something not too long ago. Say, I don't know when y'all gonna see this, but <laughs> if you go back and look at her, uh, it, was, it was like a home type yeah, of concert. Yeah, last night they did a home, yeah. home concert yeah. with the Britons. Wow, it was yeah, amazing. I just saw a little bit of it, and um, yeah, I just saw the, the views, and they had um, two thousand views. Wow, I'm not surprised. Yeah, I'm not surprised, um, man. So it's it's great to have that type of connection. Are you working? You working on a play right now? Or? I am. Mm -hmm. I am working on a play, and it's, it's like a Cinderella story. Actually, to be honest with you, I, um, my mother's prayer. Is my next production. Mm -hmm. That's the one I'll be doing next. Yeah. My mother's prayer. So I already have my cast. Another mother. Uh, That's player. yes, yes. <laughs> and 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 that one. You see the theme here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. My last one was Lord, you got issues. But uh, mm -hmm. so I got a couple yeah. of them. I have I'm, a couple I'm of them. I'm just messing with you. No, no, I understand. <laughs> but. My last play, Lord, We Got Issue, mm -hmm. it's it, it's such a phenomenal play. It's hilarious, yeah. but it's touching as well. And I wrote all the music to it. Wow. And, I mean, it was great. It That's was great. That's cool. That's cool. Well, look, uh, before I let you go, uh, I'm going to throw out some rapid-fire questions. Sure. Just a little of what I love to do with uh, with my guests. So I have my little cheat sheet here. Okay, um, sure. And I'm just going to... I'll throw these things out, okay? Mm -hmm. All right, so um, what's an online source that you cannot live without? YouTube. Really? Mm -hmm. Why is everybody saying YouTube? Well, okay. for me, YouTube, you can go back and, and listen and see what other people are doing. Mm -hmm. And um, that, that's basically what I do. I go and I search and see what people are doing. Yeah. See where we are today. Mm -hmm. See, by me being of my age group, Okay. I have to try to keep up with what's going on. Right, right. So YouTube and it's Google. It's so hard to be in your 20s nowadays, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's hard to be 25. So <laughs> they counting. Right, right, right. People don't, they don't get it. Yeah. You know. <laughs> That's cool. But, uh, and, and Google. Okay. So if there's anything you want to know, you can ask Google. Wow. You can ask Siri to find it for you, you right. know. <laughs> oh, always available, mm -hmm. always listening. So you gotta be worried about that too. Um, all right. So, um, what's the best advice that you ever received? You know, I've get, I've received a lot of advice, and just simply, don't give up mm. on your dreams. Yeah. Don't give up on your dreams, and don't let anybody define who you are. Wow, that's good. That's good. Define yourself. Yeah. You know who you are. God, God created you. Yeah. You know? But you know, there are some times in our lives when things are not going just right. We just lose focus and, and lose, you know, perspective. We forget who we are yeah. in Christ. We forget, you know, we get our self-esteem gets low and we just forget. Yeah. 
you know, and there, you know, people like, you're too old to be right, girl. Yeah? When you gonna get, what you gonna do? You still trying to, yes, ma'am, until I fulfill my purpose. Right, right. And I'm gonna work while it is day. Mm -hmm. Like my mama say. Right. I ain't going nowhere. <laughs> I'm doing this until God says no. Come on now. Come on now. Okay, so speaking of advice, okay, so if you can go back and give your younger self some advice, let's say, you know, 20, 30, well, 20 years ago or something like that, and I know we were like uh, in diapers at that point, but um, what, uh, what advice would you give yourself? I'd say don't put off tomorrow for what you can do today. Really? That would be it. Why would that be the advice that you would... Uh... Glad you asked. <laughs> because I tend to be a procrastinator. Mm. And I've allowed a lot of time to pass me by. By not moving forward. Being fearful. Yeah. You know, so... Won't do it anymore. Yeah. That's what I tell people about procrastination. Because I personally, and this is just me, I don't believe in procrastination. <laughs> I believe in levels of importance. Okay, so it's not like you're pushing uh, you're pushing things off. It's just not important to you. If it was important to you enough, then you would go ahead and do it. So if I told you that I had a check, uh, I was gonna give you a hundred thousand dollars tomorrow. Um, you know, no no pushback or anything. I don't need any interest. No, I'm just gonna drop. I need you to be here at three o'clock in the morning. I'm gonna be there. You're gonna be here. So, it's, it's, why? Because it's important. So you're not a procrastinator. A procrastinator push is everything back. It's like I'm just so selfish. I don't care what it is. I'm not, I'm not you know I'm not gonna do it. And and I know a lot of people that feel like they're procrastinators. But in the in the crux of everything is that you understand or you don't believe that whatever it is that you have to do set before you is important enough. And if we put that in, and this is an important category, you're not procrastinating about that. Understand that you have a lot of people that are waiting for you to do what you have, that what God told you to do. They're waiting for you. So the more that it's, but you don't feel like it's important. You see what I'm saying? I so there's a lot of people, that's why I don't believe in it, because I'm just like, yo, once I understand, it's like, man, I've got to do this, not for me, but there's people waiting on me. To do this type of stuff. So like, make no. me feel like I might have been a little trifling or something. No. <laughs> I'm just not. I'm just I'm trying to help the people. <laughs> Can I, I help might have been just a little bit trifling, maybe. <laughs> no. Like I said, it's just a, just a different mentality when it comes to, you know, just success, you know. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, you know, you have people, I know uh, one of my internet mentors gets up at uh, 3 o'clock in the morning every day. <laughs> Um, and he doesn't feel like getting up at three o'clock in the morning every day, but he understands that that's where success happens. Three o'clock in the morning, your CEOs, your 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 um, your Fortune 500 company uh, business people, your billionaires, they're up at that time. Yeah. And so by the time it's two o'clock, guess where they are? At home. No. On the golf course. Oh, yeah, you're right. On the golf you know what I'm saying? Yeah, While we slave right. away, that's we just right. getting up. You're right. And you're right. <laughs> trying to get exactly. our day started. There's so much day in the morning that yeah. we just sleep through. Yeah, exactly. You know what I'm saying? Oh, so, yes. uh, yeah, so understanding that. So, where can people get in contact with you? Um, my home phone number, my cell is 225 mm -hmm. 806 8229. And then you can reach me by my email. Um, Ara Walker two six five five at gmail dot com or R A Productions twenty at gmail dot com. Sweet. I'm Sweet. actually setting up my website now, so really? there will be. It's it's almost there. Yeah. So well, by the time we, this actually comes out, we'll have that information for you in the description. <laughs> yes. So, uh, I thoroughly appreciate you coming through. Oh, this has I been enjoy a being pleasure here. to I really kind of really get a, a chance to uh, sit down and talk to you. I appreciate you having me. Yeah, got to get you come uh, get you to come back and everything. Definitely. Maybe do a tutorial on on, on how to construct plays and stuff like certainly, that. Certainly, certainly. Little yeah, we in, de so. little detailed. I, I yeah. certainly. I'd love to do that. Absolutely, absolutely. 
Once again, I'm Victor, your music mentor, and we will see you next time. One of my clients asked me the other day to teach them how to copyright their music. I leaned back in my chair with a look in my face, and for me it felt like forever, but for them it was maybe, huh? Maybe like a few seconds, and I realized that for their whole musical career, they've been incredibly misinformed. Look, intellectual property teaches that once an idea musically or in any other fashion is put into a tangible form, whether it's phone, CD, tape, documents, or whatever, it is then labeled copywritten at that very second that it was formed. And what recording artists fail to realize is that the first one to register the copyright with the government wins. <laughs> so, for example, a fellow artist that I knew growing up made the mistake of being so excited about a new song and, and letting a good friend of theirs listen to the song over the phone. A few weeks later, the same friend put out the, a, a song that was similar, eerily similar, <laughs> to the same one that the artist had created. The difference was the credits let us know that this song was registered already with the government. My friend was heartbroken, but he learned an extremely valuable lesson that day. Before you release any idea to the public or any of your friends, register your idea or music with the government. Look, the poor man's copyright does not hold up in court. The only thing it proves is that you had a copy mailed to yourself, not that you created it first. Make sure that you register as many ideas as possible at the same time. Whether it's two songs or 102 songs, it all costs the same amount if they're registered together as a work. Another big question that recording artists have asked me was about the process of adding to their album a song that's been previously released by another recording artist, also known as a cover song. What's needed is what's called a mechanical license. A mechanical license is a pretty much a broad term that refers to the reproduction for distribution or sale physically or digitally of a musical composition in the form of a sound recording that you do not own the rights to. A recording artist must contact the owner of the copyright to get permission for the song to be placed on their project. It's a legal form, so it must be signed to acquire you know, the permission to use the song or the composition. This process actually can take about six days to almost six years, depending on the copyright owners. And, you know, it, it could be an individual, it could be a publishing company, or even a major record label. I really hope that this information has really helped you in some sort of way. But I want to leave you with this. No matter what you've done, where you come from, or what challenges you have faced, you can make a difference with your words and your musical career. It's your time. We're just getting started. So until next time, keep pressing. Hey, we look forward to seeing you real soon. So be sure to connect with us on social media. Like us on Facebook, and follow us on Instagram and Twitter. You can also check out our YouTube page or simply visit our website just to see what new and exciting things are happening in a city near you. Everything is in the description box below. So go and check it out, okay? See you soon.